Hi guys, welcome back to the farm in Thailand with Toonin Lee and today I've got something totally new to you. I guarantee you this has not been seen on the internet before um, and it's a secret guys. I could probably sell this secret for about a thousand pounds per person but I'm going to give it to you for free. It's probably going to make you insanely rich in Thailand and make your missus uh, want you even more so therefore I'm, I'm probably going to save a few marriages by giving this secret away free 100% free guys okay if you want to know more stay tuned big bold claims guys uh, and Lee can back it up this time so, um, a lot of you are like me out here, uh, you've come for the, for the life in Thailand and a lot of you are in the rural location, many of you are doing similar to me in Toon, uh, having a bit of a dabble on the farm and growing some produce and selling a few uh, eggs or livestock, you know, poultry, that sort of thing. Um, and it is hard going, there's no two ways about it, your profit margin is slim at best so any way that you can recoup some costs generate a little bit of extra income it all makes a difference what we've got for you today though is something that is going to make a massive difference to us and hopefully a massive difference for you as well now the first thing is our costs on the farm our main costs are our animal feed and our fish feed Anything that we can do to have a positive effect on those two outgoings is going to make a massive difference to us and probably to you guys. So there's a few ways you can do it. Supplement in your animal feed for your livestock, like your, your ducks. We've got ducks, um, quail, chickens, turkey, geese, uh, and then your fish. We've got predatory fish, we've got herbivores, um, all those sorts of things. Now in the past, what we've tried to do is supplement their feed with weeds and one particular plant which most fish love not all the the, the one the fish that are a hundred percent carnivorous won't eat it is the morning the morning glory yeah I know I know what that means guys and in, in some neck of the woods um, or pak bung and it's a floating plant if I just show you over here the far side of this pond there's a little bit of greenery in there. Now it's brilliant, the fish love it, um, also the poultry love it, but there are a few issues with it and I need to go over here and show you some of the things because I've always sort of like fought its corner using the uh, pack bung but uh, it, does tra it has transpired that it's not as good as Uncle Lee said it was. So I spent about two hours taking it out of this pond there's a, still a few little bits left in here that was hard going it made me buff but uh, I tell you what it's like piano wire you can't you can't break it at all so what happens when you throw it in it's all green and got lots of leaves over it the fish peck it to pieces all the little bits of roots and all the leaves are gone within 24 hours and then you're left with wire everywhere and a lot of it sinks then of course when you get a fish order, so our last big fish order was 12 kg a few days ago, and uh, throw the throwing net in, and what comes out? Like bloody spaghetti junction. So the net gets stuck, and the fish get out. So it's a right old pain in the arse. So it's gonna be no more pack bung in our ponds. But you can see something else growing there. Now we have tried to grow something like this before. I'll give you um, a close-up of these later on. So how, how have we got them to grow now? Well, I did mention in the, uh, the visa application video that we threw a bucket of poo in here. Now, it's not human waste, so just chew yourselves. Um, it was a mixture of poultry poo, so it was... a. Uh, a bit of duck poo, chicken poo and quail poo and uh, we put a bucket in there <coughs> we left it a couple of days and then we introduced 
two buckets, that's all, just two buckets of this weed that we got out of the river. Now this particular aquatic plant is very, very similar to the one that we already had, but I don't know why it just grows much, much quicker. This, I'm, I'm not kidding, this is less than three weeks growth. And I've been taking out about 10 landing netfalls of this each day. So if I didn't do that, this would have been full today. If I didn't take 10, 10 netfalls out yesterday, this would have been totally covered. Popped it into here. Now there are tilapia in here which do eat it, but we put enough in here that they can't keep up with it. So now, the last two days, I haven't put any in here. Right, this is a mixture. This has got predatory fish and tilapia. Going over to here, this is another tilapia pond, but this is our, our red and pink tilapia and our hybrid tilapia and uh, our silver barb. You can see it. Oh, they've just shot off, but over the far side, they are nibbling it. So what we're doing is we're putting extra bucket loads in here now that we've got enough in that one over here. So again, they're, I wouldn't say they're keeping up with it, where it's growing each day. Now, a lot of people grow the common tilapia or the Nile tilapia, which is the, the gray silvery one. Now they are voracious eaters, but again, look at that. And they have been eating it. As soon as we put it in, they're going crazy for it. There's a, I can see a few snails on it as well. So I don't know why this particular variety of plant is growing quicker than the, the two that we've already got. We've got one that's a little bit more dark green and then one which seems a little bit more, how could we describe it, fluffy. But they look like they're, they're the same species. So why is this going to make you millionaires, guys? Of course it might not. As, as, as a chance it might not, I'll, I'll be perfectly honest with you. But it's free fish food, not for the Baduk. The water and catfish do not eat this. Uh, but there's been, we've noticed a massive increase in bugs since we've put this in here. So when you put your light on at night here that we've rigged up here, uh, immediately you can see that there's a lot, lot more bugs. I suppose they're laying eggs in there and all sorts. So that is benefiting the uh, walking catfish in, in that aspect. The other thing of course is it helps with oxygenation. And now I don't know how much that it actually helps, but of course it does help. To keeping a lot of sun off the water as well. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say that it's improved the water quality because a couple of times a week we're throwing a bucket of crap in here. Now the, the fish, the, they definitely do eat a bit of it but a lot of it just breaks up and goes onto the bottom. So of course it's full of nutrients this pond. The fish um, a ballooned it's like they're on bloody steroids um, but the main thing is now now we can start taking it out of here and start populating the other ponds now we will have to keep on feeding the fish but of course the fish costs will be reduced now the fish feed costs the main thing is once we've got all four ponds full with this stuff we can take out absolutely bucket loads of the stuff and the ducks love it. I do really anticipate seeing the, the rate of growth of this um, that within within the month we'll have too much for the ducks. In which case the next money shot for you is this makes an absolutely fantastic compost and mulch. So you can stick this around your banana trees, bottom of your lime trees, your papaya trees, whatever you're growing you can shove all that, just throw it straight on there. The amount of nutrients in this is gonna be crazy. So there you go, it's gonna, it's gonna feed your plants, it's gonna suppress the weeds, it's gonna help maintain moisture content around your plants, it's gonna feed your poultry or help feed your poultry. I mean, you think of all the little microorganisms on there, it's gonna be packed full of goodness for your ducks and your chickens. Um, 
It helps sustain your, your fish diet. It must help the quality of the water, but I don't know to what degree. It probably helps with the, the oxygenation of your water as well. So to me, this has just been a massive success for us. The other plant that I do like is the hyacinth, but it's, it's quite tricky to get going. And what I have noticed is the tilapia just keep on pecking the roots. They don't actually eat the plant itself, just the root system, and then they just tip over and die. But because we've got the tilapia out of here, I don't know whether you can see them. I'll, I'll, again, I'll, I'll, I'll get a couple out, but we've got a couple dotted around. Even they have started to grow. So I know in the past I've always, always slated and been very opinionated about people doing these integrated uh, fish farming systems where they just have the, uh, the the ducks or the chickens just crapping straight into the water. That's what they're doing in the fence pond over there. But don't forget there for the fishing lake, which is going to be finished hopefully this year over there. <coughs> so we won't be selling those. I think a couple of buckets of poo in here every week. No one's going to bat an eyelid. We won't do it when they're watching anyway. We'll do it in the in the, in the evening. But loads of people have said, to, well, I say loads, don't over-exaggerately. Three different people have said to us, don't just feed them pellets, save yourself some money and just throw some crap in there. Um, we're not putting crap in the uh, the tilapia ponds <coughs> that we're, we're going to eat the fish from. But I tell you what we will be doing, the next time we stock a pond from scratch and we put young fish in here, so just fingerlings really, fingerlings are just a bit bigger than your, your fry, we will be blitzing it with uh, poultry poo and then as they get a little bit longer then we can wean them onto the uh, the pellet and and vegetation so there you go guys if you're out in Thailand and you're watching your bark and you've got a few animals to feed and fish to feed um, throw a bit of poo in your pond leave it a few days get hold of some of this stuff we got it out the river and uh, get it in there but make sure that you haven't got any fish that are gonna eat it to start with you could even just go all the buckets you've got just put a little bit of poo in there and then put a, load, <coughs> a handful of these in each bucket uh, let, the, let the numbers multiply and then once you've got enough start launching it into your, your ponds so we'll give you an update in another month or two see, uh, see how it's going and um, yeah, hopefully you'll see a lot of fat, happy ducks that are being fed for, not being fed for free because you've still got to keep the protein levels up, but um, it's all looking good. So there you are, guys. I wasn't bullshitting, was I? Um, go down this route and your missus will be a lot happy with you. Money will be rolling in. It's up to you how you spend it. Um, we're probably going to we're going to probably buy another 10,000 ducks or something. Um, I don't know what we're going to do with all the money, to be perfectly honest. But there you go. A real life solution from Lee and Toon's farm. Not just a YouTube channel, are we? We're changing lives. We help you. Help us to help you. That's it. So, hope you enjoyed yourself. Um, Toon's so happy with my discovery, uh, we're off to go skinny dipping and it's only half ten. Alright guys, take care and uh, we'll see you soon, ta-da for now. The story begins in a town called Dead Man's Creek. Bill Cody was out to strike it rich. His fate was sealed with God's righteous wrath. The day, 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 Jed Farms has crossed his path. The day, 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 Jed Farms has crossed his path. Farnsworth and Cody were two prospecting men. Came upon a ledge of solid gold. The gold to keep was Farnsworth's aid. 
And so, and so, and so, Billy must be slain. And so, and so, and so, Billy must be slain. Sing your final song, Bill Cody, the campfire has gone out. Bill Cody, time to head on home, Bill Cody, and find the arms of the one you love. On a cold, dark night, when Billy fell asleep, Farnsworth took his life away The body he buried in a shallow grave And blame, and blame, and blame His death on an Indian grave